mental health is a critical piece of overall wellness. So that is why we took that aspect of each of our respective businesses and created a program called Art for Living Well. This is Abby Custis, and we're in Abby's studio now. My name is Kelly Anders, and I have a yoga therapy studio in Berlin, Maryland. We wanted to share some ideas with you today when you're approaching your blank canvas at home that would help make your process a little bit more embodied and a little bit more of an expression of what's alive in you. And in order to do that, um, we've both found, and I find in my process as an artist, that it's so important to come from a place of joy and find joy in your everyday surroundings and your everyday experiences. And together with Kelly's work and what I do, we help you find that place of center and that place of joy to be able to sit with a blank canvas without as much angst and intimidation, but to be feeling free and be able to release whatever needs to be released onto the blank canvas. So the first uh, tip or takeaway that we'd like to share with you today is when you approach your canvas to come with an actual intention. We have a bit of a, a process, an initiation of sorts when uh, at our events that we use a stick and various color paints. Uh, a lot of what we hear when people set their intentions at our events is that they just want to play. They want to uh, move outside of let go construct of the boxes that we often sort of hold ourselves in or that we have to be in sometimes in terms of day-to-day -day living uh, and the roles that we play as you know, mother and employee or boss or what have you. Um, that letting go is, is a big part of it, but whatever your intention is, is important um, in and of itself. And sometimes it's important to, we find that you might get too stuck into what is my intention and then get into worry, worrying about what your intention should be, and that's sometimes what happens when you try to start painting on your blank canvas, is you're thinking too much, you have too much in your mind, and through setting the intention, it's, that's why often people we work with think they end up coming up with, sometimes at the end they realize it, is that letting go is really what they wanted to get out of it. And when you do that, that's why it's not like a typical event where you everyone leaves or you look at a picture and try to replicate it. It's more or less like this canvas down here. It's just letting it free, come out with it and let it be free um, with color and movement um, and embodiment. And I think it's important also to mention um, one of the things that we emphasize is the message in the mistake. Yes. As in life. I, uh, it's a very good analogy for life because when you're painting, sometimes you get the wrong color or some paint flings on the canvas that you didn't mean for it to go or that you have the wrong cap on the paint and it's the wrong color. But we found that oftentimes when that happens, it leads you in a totally different direction just as in life when things come up. A lot of us have most definitely been experiencing that right now. Nothing that we have expected is happening. Things are having to shift. Lights are shifting. Things, but we're learning to go with the flow with that. And we invite you to practice that on the canvas. One of the things that we do in our process and in our events is to incorporate embodiment techniques into the actual act of creating art. So embodiment in summary is really just the sense of being alive, the sense of alignment, of being in touch with the sense of aliveness within you. Um, and we have many techniques. Uh, we actually demonstrate eight specific technique, painting techniques, and we couple that with some various embodiment techniques, one of which I'll, I'll sh um, share with you today. And that one is kaleidoscope. Uh, if you think about a kaleidoscope, and when you uh, turn the barrel of it, how it creates a different viewpoint, a different image, a different perspective, that through holding your body in various ways, we can have a shift in perspective. And so we explore that with two poses, 
One is called privacy pose and the other is called vulnerability pose. Yeah, so we'll demonstrate that for you. So um, sometimes in order to have a shift in perspective in our lives, we need to contract, we need to go in. And so I invite people as we're doing these various art techniques to explore this in their own bodies, to bring their feet together, bring your arms together, crossed in front of your chest and tucking your chin to your chest. And we'll guide you to tune in to your breath and to notice what it's like to hold space for yourself, to be in private with your own feelings, your own thoughts, and just notice what arises and notice the residue of this. And then sometimes, like a kaleidoscope, a shift in perspective comes about not through going inward and contracting, but to stepping outside of our comfort zone and stepping into feeling more expanded, to taking a risk, to being a little bit more vulnerable in life. And sometimes closing the eyes can help a person really tune into the sensation arising inside of them and the emotion as well that's coming up just simply by placing your body in a particular way, in a particular shape, noticing once again sort of what is coming up for you and whether this feels more comfortable. We learn through contrast. So noticing whether this is more comfortable or less comfortable, we're going to step back together once more to privacy pose, bringing everything back in, having that opportunity once more for contrast to notice, uh, does it feel like a relief? Does it feel more comfortable to come back into myself? And sometimes we need in life to titrate back and forth to, to sort of pendulate between being inward and being willing to be outward and exploring then how that can be expressed through your artwork. So if you want to talk about the kaleidoscope technique, I can... It's similar to, um, you know, the mistake. They're just shifting the perspective. And you can do that on if you're at home painting, simple as putting an object, a leaf even, from nature on a canvas and painting around it or spray painting around it. Or and the, Or a mason jar. Or lids, lids from your kitchen, pretty much anything. Then you move those just a little bit and paint over it again in a different color and it looks completely different. So putting that in perspective to life is what we want you to see through color and through paint and that technique. And that's just one of the many that we have been exploring together and through our Art for Living Well program. And another uh, sort of tip or technique that um, we offer you today it has to do with the color itself. And one of the main, um, I guess, objectives is for people in the process of all of these various embodiment techniques and the art that we take is to tune in a little bit more to our intuition, to be guided by what is arising from within instead of using our head, um, making it more of a, a bottom up than a top down process. So there are a couple different ways that we can do that. So we have these color cards. And it's just kind of a fun game. And you might ask yourself too, and just in general, like you might often go to a certain color when you get dressed, or you might notice that, wow, I have all blue towels, or I just certain colors resonate with certain people and certain colors activate certain people. So it's just a matter of, again, tuning into that and tuning into why and kind of just investigating. There's no real answer to it. It's just exploring um, color and play. Again, it's playing and having joy. Like, color brings joy to people's lives. So that's um, another part of what we like to offer. Yeah, and it's kind of fun also to play with the idea of choosing the color yourself or making it a little more exciting and flipping the cards or uh, deciding, letting the universe sort of decide for you what colors to work with and trusting that those are the right colors for your particular canvas. Um, and then I think probably one more embodied technique that 
everyone would benefit from, whether you're making art or not, is the power of the pause. Yeah. So do you want to talk about that in terms of the painting? So in terms, again, they relate back to every day, but we encourage people when they are painting, because it's exciting, it's joy-filled, it's playful, playing like children, you're letting yourself go, but then you go too much and it's muddy and, it's, and you're not happy. So it's like, take a step back and take a breath and let it be for a second. And again, it's just like in life, sometimes you get, you go too far in, you're too caught in your own thoughts that you can't see anything outside of, your, of that thought. So it's same thing with the painting, stepping back, letting it breathe, letting it dry a minute, and then coming back to it with a shifted perspective. The example behind you. Yes. So this is an example of the many techniques that we teach at our events um, and how they ended up actually becoming a painting themselves. Mm -hmm. And we find that when people start with a blank canvas, they think, oh, no, I can't paint. But it's so not true. Everyone has it within you. And so it's, it's again, to play and explore and get outside of the thoughts and just let it be real. Mm -hmm. So through our website, artforlivingwell.com, you can find out more about the upcoming events that we have. We also uh, schedule events by request for um, private events, corporate, uh, the team building events, celebrations of various sorts. Um, and if you have any questions further about embodiment or yoga therapy, you can go to balancedyogaandwellness.com or if you're interested in any of the arts, amazing <laughs> art, go to abbycustis.com. So, okay. and we'll be back with more techniques. <laughs>